A lot has changed in the political landscape since the early 2000s. Hold on, we're buying less oil in order to avoid invading a foreign country? I don't even recognize you guys anymore. Now to understand the proposed solution to this whole Russia oil problem, and the problem itself, I'm starting with a simple premise. The United States government does not control oil companies and vice versa. These are two separate entities that generally see eye to eye, but there are exceptions like the crisis in prices we're seeing today. You want to sell us oil at a good price? Great! I want to buy oil at a good price. This all feels like a match made in heaven. Where's that fine print though? Things get a little more complicated when you start looking at the sourcing of this oil that we're buying. You see, ExxonMobil takes the very broad perspective of energy markets. Energy markets, they're fluid. You want to get prices down? Get someone to make more oil. Could be America, could be Saudi Arabia, a barrel of oil is a barrel of oil. As the American company Exxon, well we got wells in Indonesia, Equatorial Guinea, and a ton of other oil fields all over the world. Help us get more contracts and we'll make more oil for you guys. Lower the price. Also maybe you should talk to some of the countries that directly control their oil companies and tell them to drill baby drill either directly or through contracts with us, ExxonMobil. If we're all pooling our oil resources together, the price is going to go down as supply goes up. Now, the American government on the other hand generally takes the perspective, well I do like low prices, but how about you focus a little more on drilling on the great untapped wealth of oil reserves domestically. Those prices we directly control. If Equatorial Guinea kicks you out of their oil fields, not a ton we can do short of give them a democracy, wink wink. Domestically though, well we control those wells and we can turn on and off the spigot accordingly. Now fortunately or unfortunately, the United States cannot boss around private entities, which is where you get recent exchanges like why not apply the same logic to energy and increase domestic production here? Well, there are 9,000 approved oil leases that the oil companies are not tapping into currently, so I would ask them that question. Is there nothing that the administration can do to get those providers back to pre-pandemic levels? Do you think the oil companies don't have enough money to drill on the places that have been pre-approved? Just asking. I would, I would point that question to them, and we can talk about it more tomorrow when you learn more. Yeah man, asking oil companies to drill domestically just to help America achieve energy independence is sort of like asking Goldman Sachs to start bankrolling some of our debt because, oh man, that would be a huge help for the country. Financial independence. What do you say finance industry, wanna take one for the team on this? Wait, wait, where are you going? Now what I'm trying to illustrate in this intro is that America and America's oil industry are two very different entities with different goals and motivations backing them. So with all those pieces laid out, let's start putting together this puzzle. Now first, we need to go back to a truly basic question where there's no definitive right answer. What is our goal in this situation? Is it the ExxonMobil emphasis of increasing global production to fight price increases, or is it the American goal of increasing oil production that happens specifically under our flag to make America more energy independent and maintain more direct controls over the prices and the flows of oil? Or at least have a friend who maintains some of that direct control over price and hope Exxon keeps taking our calls. Now for his part, President Biden is currently going all in on energy production in OPEC nations. Nice. He's taking the liquid markets increasing production everywhere to fight price increases approach. Now don't worry though, if you view oil companies as inherently American, well this approach is A-OK. -okay. You see, Saudi Arabia contracts out their production and scaling to ExxonMobil. Pumping a barrel out there is just as good for the bottom line as it is producing a barrel domestically, minus of course having to pay licensing fees to the kingdom. And they still get to do their patriotic duty of lowering global oil prices. Everyone wins. 
I think. Oh, wait, why are we trying to convince OPEC countries like Venezuela and Saudi Arabia to push the pedal of the metal instead of just doing that domestically? Well, as Jen Psaki would say, ask the oil companies, not us. We have 9,000 approved oil fields that they aren't taking advantage of right now. Want us to throw a few thousand more on top of the pile? Maybe make it a cool 10,000? Well, as you can imagine, there is no one simple answer to this question. I mean, check the amount of runtime we have left in this video. Got a little bit of space to cover. There are two major reasons why America's domestic oil response has taken off to a rocky start. First, the strategic disconnect I keep hammering home in this video. You see, in Venezuela or Saudi Arabia, if you want to produce more oil, you get that darn oil. Here's a government edict, our state-owned oil company is going to start pumping or contracting that work at ExxonMobil until we have this set amount of oil that the government says we need to have. In America, on the other hand, you got to get the government on the phone with all the CEOs of these companies and say, hey man, we'd really love it if you drilled baby drilled. Really sell them on it. Now recently, I do feel like the Biden administration is leaning a little bit heavily on this excuse. Oh, we're only the feeble federal government here. No power over companies. But there is a kernel of truth to this problem. In recent years, oil markets have been crazy. $75 a barrel, negative $30 a barrel, that's right, you pay us, $125 a barrel. Even Bitcoin is saying, whoa, 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 slow down, man. If you're a private company, this is a recipe for investment disaster. Invest in my new oil well and next year we'll have it fully operational and something's probably going to happen. Let's all just pray that the arrows are pointing up when we open. Companies are cautious about investing too much too quickly because of the COVID-19 pandemic's oil bust. When Americans were stuck inside, the oil market saw negative pricing and investors are hesitant to put more money into fossil fuel stocks right now. Now this has all led to a major divergence that we don't talk about enough when we're having these oil conversations. Because bureaucracies are bureaucracies, back during the time when the oil prices were through the floor next to the fossil fuels, well the OPEC nations went full speed ahead into the iceberg. Saudi Energy Minister Prince Abdulaziz bin Salman tried to orchestrate a preemptive production cut, equating COVID's impact on oil markets to a house on fire. But Russia refused and talks collapsed, triggering a price war with an OPEC plus. Now, of course, leave it to oil industries to produce the fieriest of messes. On the other hand, America's private oil companies found the lifeboat immediately and yeeted themselves off the side of the ship at the first sign of trouble. Producers pulled drill rigs from service, fired workers, and even choked back wells to halt the flow of crude oil. Within three months after that price collapse, US production had fell from a record 13.1 million barrels a day to 10.5 million and stayed there for nearly a year. So now America's in this life raft watching the rest of the world sail away producing as much oil as they were before. And we're saying, wait for us! Oh god, it's going to take years for us to catch up. And that's only if investors start to give us the money to redevelop American oil fields again. So that's a major reason why, if you wanted to increase oil production tomorrow, you'd call up Saudi Arabia before you called up Governor Abbott. There is one other huge reason why American oil companies themselves, not the US government, would want to focus their attention and investment on anywhere but America when it comes to future oil production when given the choice. Fracking? Well, it is really expensive. Whereas it costs only about 5 to 10 bucks to make a barrel of oil in Saudi Arabia, digging up West Texas crude costs about $70 a barrel. 10 to 15 dollars, 70 dollars. 
No one compared to sticking a straw in the ground and just sucking as hard as possible. Hydraulically fracturing rocks to try to milk them for a bit of oil is quite the expensive operation. Now, simply put in all this, if you were a president like Biden who wanted to say double the national stock of knockoff superhero toys overnight, we are going to call China, not the Midwest. They already have the manufacturing capacity and they're going to be the ones who attract the corporate investment because well, they can produce that product at a much lower price. Now, that's not to poo poo the idea of a domestic energy independence. In fact, Exxon has said it expects to increase production in the Permian by 100,000 barrels per day this year, on top of a sharp ramp up last year to 460,000 barrels per day. Unfortunately, that ramp up is a drop in the barrel when compared to the 5 million barrels a day in Russian exports that we're removing from the pool. So this brings me to one final question that might tie up some of the loose ends in this episode when we're talking about this stuff. We're talking about Russian oil in America. Not sure if you noticed, but there's a whole ocean separating us. Surely we don't import much Russian oil. And we don't. If you look at our crude oil imports, Canada is the name of the game. Oh, and there's little Russia in the bottom right corner, making up almost 2% of our imports. Who's an oil superpower? You are. Now, Biden's announcement that he's not buying Russian oil imports was about as impactful as me announcing that I'm not going to buy anything from SkyMall. We weren't exactly about to turn in our punch card for a free barrel of oil. The reason Russia removing themselves from the energy market affects oil sales and oil prices in America is because, as I mentioned above, the oil market is generally incredibly fluid. If American oil companies producing domestically can turn a higher profit in, say, Great Britain, well, they're going to sell oil over there instead. Now, because of that, oil problems somewhere across the globe raise prices in countries with privatized oil industries. So that's the current conversation around oil prices and, well, all the other commodities that make up cards and settlers of Catan right now. Look out, weed and fertilizer. Until next time, thank you, and that's all I have to say about that. Now, one more thing before you go. If you enjoyed this episode and want to learn more, I highly recommend this book right over here, Private Empire, Exxon Mobil and American Power. Now I know this book, based on its title, sounds super liberal and anti-corporate, but it's actually an incredibly non-judgmental and comprehensive look at oil companies. I mean comprehensive, look at how thick this guy is, their goals and how they interact with each other in governments. Now, I kind of spoiled a fair amount of the book in this episode, but there are some really interesting Exxon climate change science research stuff in there that didn't come up today. Link in the description to their Amazon page if you're interested. I'm not an affiliate or anything, so no pressure for me to go out and buy it. Hello YouTube, I'd like to thank my patrons over here for helping me put out my videos. If you want to support independent, nonpartisan news looking into the overlooked, join this growing list of exceptional individuals by clicking on that link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring. If you like what you saw, give me a thumbs up, and lastly, as always, thank you for watching.